So last week on the 14th, hit a bit of a mini milestone. Here's your story, let's begin. The world is fine, come on, dive in. The future's here, it's right before your eyes. The YouTube channel went over 100,000 views. Now in the scheme of things, that may not be a lot. But considering how specific these videos are, I'm really happy with that. 100,000 views. As one person mentioned, it's just one, one guy who just keeps watching them over and over. <clears throat> hey, that's possible. Also, uh, I'm just a few subs, subscriptions away from 500. And again, in the scheme of things on YouTube, that's certainly not a big deal, but uh, for me, it's gratifying to see that. So I want to thank everybody for that. I want to thank you again for the emails, for the messages, for the, the likes, the subscriptions, and particularly to the Patreon supporters who support this channel. I thank you so much for that. I also want to do a little update on uh, food. I've beat up on Cuenca, or Ecuador in general, pretty tough on food, particularly when it comes to things like beef. And I would have to say rightfully so, because for the most part, the beef in Ecuador pretty much sucks. It's tough, it's stringy, it's old milk cows that don't give out milk anymore. Not much you can say about it, that's just what it is. But this year, there's been an explosion in restaurants, and I would say international restaurants, something beyond the Seco de Pollo and Seco de Carne that you see everywhere. Mexican food, Indian food, uh, gringo food, hamburgers, the new, um, the new Prague Brew Pub, whatever the real name is. I ordered a hamburger there for lunch a week or two back and it was absolutely astounding. It was delicious. I will warn you though, if you're going to go and have one, bring your own roll. Stop at a bakery, get a good roll because the roll has to be the worst in the world. <laughs> it was inedible. I mean, I peeled it off and I just ate the hamburger, but the hamburger was crazy good. Didn't have any of the aftertaste. It was juicy. It was really, really good. So what's the change? Well, what the change is, you will find, of course, these restaurants cost more than the typical restaurants. That burger ran me, I think, nine, ten dollars maybe something like you'd get a Red Robin. But if you're going to import the beef, particularly from Argentina, because of the import taxes in Ecuador, it's going to cost more. And so you're gonna pay more if you want something good. There's a new Mexican restaurant that's just killer. It's so good. There's just a few doors down from that same Prague brew pub, again, whatever the name is, which is right across the street from the Super Maxi uh, near Millennium Plaza. There's restaurants popping up all over town that have delicious food. The food in the stores are changing somewhat, some things. You can find, you can find now French yogurt instead of just the local yogurt. You can find some French cheeses instead of just the local cheeses. You can, buy, you can buy an outstandingly delicious blue cheese now, or um, brie, because they're coming from France, because of the new trade agreement. They're finally starting to trickle in. So the landscape for food is changing rapidly. It is more expensive. You're gonna pay double, triple, quadruple what you would pay for local food. But you can manage that. You can have, you know, the, the local food and the local lunches. It's, you know, you find your favorite places that are decent, taste good, and you eat there. And then once or twice a week, you splurge and you go have a nice lunch or dinner at one of these other places. In the past, there were only a few places that had food that were really, really, really good. One such place was the Red Crab. It's a chain, I think there's one in Guayaquil one in Quito maybe, and it has a delicious steak there. 
The only problem with that, the downside, is I took a friend and the, the bill cost me $120 for two people and for, for steak and lobster. You know, it looked a little pricey, particularly for Cuenca, but it was delicious. That's still there. A place like that doesn't go away. You've got um, uh, Terra Luna, which is also down the street from that same Super Maxi that's been there for quite some time. He's the brother of the owner of the Red Crab. And that restaurant is really, really good. It tends to be more seafood, but it's fresh, and delicious food there. That was true before. Those places are still there, they still exist, but the wave of new places coming in, uh, it's, it's astounding. And of course you have your old standbys, the San Sebas, particularly for breakfast and lunches. You've got uh, Sunrise Cafe, that's every year that gets better and better and better. It's so good now compared to what it you know, was a year or so ago. And so those old standbys, remain because they were good. Inca, I should mention Inca, a uh, decent hamburger. They remain because they're good. But you have a new wave of places to, to go to, to explore, and I'm, I'm so surprised at how delicious some of these are. It was one of the glaring defects of coming to Cuenca. I mean, it's sad that you have to decide to give up certain things in your life. And that's rapidly changing, and you're gonna find now, if you come, that maybe you're not having to give up those things that you love um, when it comes to food. So, good news all around. Again, thank everybody. Please do the likes and the subscriptions, and I will see you soon. I've gotta go pack some bags. You know you could